Another day in the shop, we got a 2011 Ford Flex. This is a 3.5 V6. We actively have a water pump leak in here. I just want to show you guys what to look for, uh, where to look for drips with these water pumps. Um, the, the pumps are internal, driven off the timing chain. So they have a channel that runs outside the block, kind of behind the alternator. So I'll kind of get you in here and show you where the drips are coming from and what to look for to diagnose a water pump on one of these. Again, sorry for the camera angle. It's kind of hard to get in there, but yeah, right, right there you see the drips. So if we kind of look at it um, from the front here, I mean, that's a pretty significant leak there. It usually drips right off the AC compressor. But yeah, it's very hard to tell. You can't see it from up there really. Um, I think maybe what I'll do is pull that belt tensioner off and see if I can get you guys a better look at uh, where that weep hole is. Okay, so we got our serpentine belt uh, tensioner removed. Pretty hard to uh, get in there with a GoPro and check this. So we're using a, a bore scope here and getting you in close here to this uh, uh, core plug there. And just above it, you'll see the weep hole drain. Uh, that little hole right there. Again, this is very hard to see in the vehicle i mean i tried getting a mirror on it and and uh kind of checking it but man it's it's tough to even get a light situated in there and get a mirror on it um but yeah just above that core plug you're gonna see where that coolant is actually coming out of it looks like the core plug's wet and it is but that's not where the leak is coming from it's coming from above um in this hole right right there little little hole that's full of coolant in there also you can kind of tell uh, it's a dark green specialty coolant still in this vehicle um, I don't believe they make a, that anymore it switches over to the the yellow stuff so uh, but yeah you can see that uh, that uh, weep hole with some coolant in there it's not really dripping there it's just kind of running down so it makes it tough to actually see kind of how it's it's running through there but uh, yeah it's got everything wet all right so you saw that again it's very tough to tell on these you can kind of bank on you know having any kind of coolant leak up front like that and be the water pump I mean there's really nothing much else there that we have issues with on these um, the 3.5 in general has been a pretty good engine the naturally aspirated 3.5 so yeah um this is gonna be a short video i'm gonna start pulling the top end apart we got to get our our cam um holders in there or tools and then uh get this timing chain pulled off get the water pump out of it and switch it over
All right, so we got that uh, front cover off. Why don't you have a look at this water pump? The water pump pulley is right here. Again, driven off the timing chain. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of tilted in there. So let me show you kind of how loose this is. It's pretty loose. It wasn't making any noise, but it was leaking through that channel in the water pump here. Uh, again, we have to flush this cooling system out uh, just to make sure there's no debris in there. Um, there's nothing like doing a water pump job under warranty. <laughs> so make sure you flush the coolant, any kind of metal shavings or anything that are left in the block will destroy a water pump and cause it to leak. So definitely, uh, if it's, if it's that bad, there's probably metal in it somewhere. So we're just gonna end up replacing the primary chain here. Just because of the mileage on the vehicle, you know, 178,000 miles, we already have the timing chain off. Let's just go ahead and replace it. We're gonna replace, like I said, the guides, the tensioners. The tensioners wear out after a while too. So um, we're gonna do that. Secondary chains, not much to go wrong with there. They're just a small, small chain here. Um, not really much to, to worry about there. We'll check the guides here and make sure those are all good and everything. But uh, yeah, we got our locking tools in there. Timing set the way it should be. Um, again, there's other videos out there that can kind of explain that. We got dots up here. Um, right there actually another dot over here uh, the marks don't line up right now of course because um, this is an old chain so when it revolves it uh, you know the marks are off obviously so we got a crank set to where it should be we're gonna start pulling the uh, the oil control solenoids off um, the whole block here has to come off and then we can get our chains chains off get the water pump off and uh, keep that changed. So if we look at the water pump housing here, or the block, you can see this channel. That is where the, uh, the weep hole drains into. That little channel right there, which in turn goes through this channel outside of the block over here. So, I'm going to spray some brake clean in there so you can kind of see where that is coming out and hopefully better explain why the water is dripping out there. All right, so hopefully you can see in there. Get my can of brake clean out here and see if I can't. So that's where it drains to outside. That's a very hard spot to detect. So hopefully that kind of explains uh, where that uh, leaks to the outside. But yeah, normally when you have any coolant leaking on the front of the block like that, it's always the water pump. 90% of the time, I would say, probably 99% of the time, I don't really see head gasket issues on the naturally aspirated 3.5s. So 
uh, we'll get that water pump replaced and get her put back together. So we got the water pump in now. Timing chain is set. We actually have an orange link here made it with a dot on the, the cam gear. Same way back here. Um, if you hold this chain up, there's actually more teeth, I believe, on the back side than the front side, or more links, I should say. Because if you look at the crank, the yellow link is offset on the bottom side there. So if you can see right there, we're in time. So now we just pull the pin and uh, walk away real fast. Another thing I wanted to point out is when you are replacing the timing chains, make sure that these guides, I don't know if you can see right there, make sure that the chain is actually sitting in the, the little channel there. Sometimes I've seen them where the chain is actually up over the edge there and that creates all sorts of problems. So make sure the chain is actually in the channel of the guide. Everything looks good there. All right, we gotta put our housings back on for the um, VCT solenoids. I forgot to order seals for that. They just showed up. Here's some part numbers for you. That part number right there for the small seal it actually goes on the back side here this one's still in place but it's it's this seal right here and then there's three seals right here it's like a split seal um, and those are that part number right there I would highly recommend replacing all of them just because they're there, you have it apart. So yeah, we're gonna replace those seals, get it all put back together. Uh, as far as torque specs go, pretty much everything in the timing, uh, uh, timing system, the water pump, bolts are 89 inch pounds, these are 89 inch pounds, all your guides, the tensioner, everything is 89 inch pounds. So um, yeah, don't over tighten them, but make sure you get them tight. Um, pretty small bolts so 89 inch pounds on pretty much everything in the timing system we're at that point now where we got all our water pump timing chains all that stuff wrapped up in the front of the engine here we're gonna put that timing cover back on and a lot of you guys asked me for uh, torque specs so uh, there's the the cover, torque everything, all bolts to 89 inch pounds to start with, I believe it's the first step. Final torque on the, I think there's 22 around the outside edge. Those are 18 foot pounds. These three where the engine mount goes through is 55 foot pounds. And make sure you silicone everything. But yeah, I'm gonna put that cover on probably let it sit overnight because I like to let the silicone cure that long just to prevent any chance of oil leaks. Um, valve covers, I believe those are 89 inch pounds also. So yeah, I'm gonna end up getting this done here. Uh, kind of set, gotta set the camera down for a minute, get stuff wrapped up for the day. But yeah, um, appreciate you guys for watching. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.